This is a big old block of concrete, man. It's big, it's heavy, it's solid, it's dense. Now, what happens if we put it in water? Let's go find out. It sinks. However, when properly formed and reinforced, concrete can be used to make a pretty cheap ship. But that's the key word, cheap. Because really that's the only advantage a concrete ship could have, because it certainly won't be fast or especially strong. Although the concept of concrete barges was around since the 1850s, it wasn't until the First World War that self-propelled ships of concrete were pioneered. In 1918, the final year of the First World War, President Woodrow Wilson enabled the Emergency Fleet Corporation to begin construction on 24 concrete ships that were going to be used as transports for cargo and troops. They didn't need to be fast or strong or anything like that. The government simply needed a lot of them as quickly as possible. However, the war ended only a few months later and none of these ships were finished yet. Twelve of them were under construction, and they were completed eventually post-war. One of these ships, the 260-foot SS Atlantis, the second of these twelve ships to be completed, is the focus of our adventure today. The Atlantis served for two years as a cargo ship, and crossed the Atlantic a few times. At least two of those voyages was as a troop ship, ferrying American servicemen home from Europe as the Great War ended. She was retired after only those two years of service. She simply was not economically efficient. So even though the Atlantis lies 150 feet offshore from a well-populated beach in Cape May, I gotta launch my kayak in North Cape May. It's gonna be a cold day. See, the thing is, New Jersey's been handing out a ton of social distancing fines for people out kayaking or boating. I don't see how kayaking violates social distancing. But anyway, I don't want a thousand dollar fine. We're gonna have a little bit more of an adventure. I'm gonna get a better workout. Hopefully we're still gonna be able to get some great shots of the wreck. The neat thing is I've never really seen footage from a kayak able to get up close to the wreck. I've seen kayakers out there, so I know people do it, but I've never seen footage posted anywhere. So what I'm really hoping to do today is get out to it and take some of my own. I'm gonna see how close I can get up to it. I know the currents around the wreck are actually a little rough and they do churn a bit. And I've been out there once before and it tried taking me right out to sea. So I'm gonna be very cautious, but I'm still gonna to try to get something good. We're on the Delaware Bay. Launching from North Cape May, we're going to paddle south along the beach, around the jetties, and across the Cape May Canal. On our left will be Higby's Beach. Continuing on, we'll arrive at Sunset Beach. And there, there is the wreck, 150 feet offshore. It's a two and a half mile kayaking trip each way. As I got to the canal, I had to wait for a few minutes as the Cape May Lewis Ferry was departing. There's an interesting tie-in between the Cape May Ferry and the SS Atlantis. In 1964, the Cape May Lewis Ferry was established, but people have been trying to connect New Jersey and Delaware by ferry for almost 200 years. In the 1920s, Colonel Jesse Rosenfeld intended to establish the ferry at Sunset Beach. He'd used state-of-the-art steamships as the ferries themselves, but he purchased the SS Atlantis to be towed into place and sunk as part of a pier. The plan was to then sink two more of these concrete ships in a Y shape to act as a dock for his ferries. The Atlantis sat moored offshore for a couple of weeks, waiting to be towed into place. But shortly after the project began, a storm hit Cape May. The Atlantis broke loose and she grounded 150 feet offshore. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't free her. She blocked the intended ferry route and the project was scrapped. Her sister ship went down a few years ago. She was sunk for an artificial reef. It's a shame, I used to sail on her all the time. Beautiful ship. They build her as a miniature cruise liner. Not this one, this one's a ferry. But the one that went down was a miniature cruise liner. Here we go, no more boats coming in for a while. Don't wanna get run down by a boat. Here we go, we gotta ride this wake. Woo! All right, where are my dolphin friends at? So at about the halfway point, I've landed here at Higby's Beach. I wanted to catch my breath, but this place actually has some interesting history too. 
Before the railroad was built to Cape May, the most common way of getting down here was a steamboat from Philadelphia. The most famous of those steamboats was called the Republic. In fact, she used to land right here. You can still see a little bit of the pier behind me. Higby's Beach was also a nudist beach in the 1960s. Rumor has it that whenever the ferry departed, it would always lean in the direction of the beach because most of her passengers would go to that side to peep at the bathers. It's also rumored that near Higby's Beach is where Captain Kidd buried some of his treasure before returning to New York City and eventually being tried and executed for piracy. But that's another adventure video. That said, I really have to get back to see. The tide is coming in and high tide is not nice around here. Plus, we won't see as much of the shipwreck. At the time of this video, in 2020, the Atlantis has rested here for 94 years, almost to the day. She's weathered hurricanes, blizzards, and 94 seasons of the bay freezing, unfreezing, and refreezing again. Wow. Unreal. Current is strong, baby. But wow. Very little of her is left above the surface today, and the water is too murky for any useful underwater footage. Unbelievable. So that is the side of her hull right there. The ship has a really basic outline. One of the most simplistic superstructures you could imagine. A forward well deck, which is pretty elongated, and then a simplistic prow. A very simple aft well deck, and then your standard clipper style stern. The superstructure is nothing more than a square deck house, a wheel house up at the front, and then a single funnel. Shortly after her grounding, the wreck broke into two segments, right about down the middle. And then shortly after that, a third section broke right there, a very narrow sliver. This middle section crumbled around the 1960s, give or take. The aft half rolled over onto its side, so this side of the hull was pointed up, and we got the keel now exposed. This is her deck, up is her hull, and that's her keel. The forward section slowly settled nose down, so that the bow was pointed downward. The after part eventually collapsed and broke off. Now all we have is this sort of shape. So now we have the stern section up on an angle, the water like that, and the bow section relatively upright but pointed downward. And that is all that remains today. There was the forward section of the starboard superstructure attached here, but in 2014, that collapsed. I wonder if that opening right there in this bulkhead was actually there structurally. It's possible that this was some sort of a passageway. It would have been a watertight door for all we know. Would they even bother making this ship watertight on the inside? You spring a leak in a concrete ship, you're kind of effed. How many decks tall is that hull? Is that two decks? Oh yeah, that's two decks. See right there, halfway up the frame? That's the uh, support for the next deck, or that's the deck itself. I had thought given she's a cargo freighter, the whole hull might have just been this tall, one story. It probably is in certain compartments, like right there, the next compartment. I, this, this beam is probably part of a division. Yeah, it is part of a division for a compartment. That after compartment is probably just one tall hole, and this midsection is probably two floors. And then I bet the forward section was probably one floor as well. Holy cow, the current is scary. Talk about magnificent. That's her hull. That's her starboard side. Not much of the concrete left. Much of the concrete has fallen off and the rebar inside is exposed and jagged. Concrete ships were affordable because they were cheaper to make than steel ships. But as you can see, there's a significant amount of reinforcing steel inside this concrete. There would have to be for a ship to withstand transatlantic voyages. This exposed rebar makes paddling around the wreck quite dangerous for inexperienced kayakers. I'm inside the ship. I'm inside the SS Atlantis. It's low tide, just about within a half hour of low tide right now. So you're not gonna see much more of her ever again. How many exposed shipwrecks can you see the keel of? Her double bottom 
Very little remains of the superstructure up there. But her concrete decks are still there in fragments. Fragments of her do occasionally wash up on shore, including these pieces here in my collection. But aside from me having personally found these items on the beach, there's nothing to really indicate where they came from. They look like just generic blocks of concrete. Do you hear that? That's the ship saturating with water. This block actually is a chunk of the SS Atlantis. That's so bizarre. All right, it's coming out. Do you hear it sizzling? It's so porous. I had intended to only use that shot for it sinks and then cut it, but you know what, that was actually pretty cool. She's massive. She looks tiny when you're on the shore. There she is, the world famous concrete ship, SS Atlantis. Just want to touch her real quick. Unreal. I've seen this ship my whole life. To be able to touch her before she disappears, that's something special. That's the inside of her double bottom. I'm hitting something with the bottom of the kayak. So there's something right there. What's pretty amazing is whenever the water swells in, you can feel the air get forced out through that hole. You can actually see the algae moving with the breeze being generated by it. And you can see the water surging out here as well. That's pretty amazing. So when a ship is going down, a lot of people don't realize this, but it gets very windy inside. And that's because the water is forcing the air out. And we see that right there, perfectly demonstrated. I'm gonna round her one more time, and then I'll call it a day. She's not the only concrete ship that's out there. Most of the 12 of the emergency fleet were sunk as breakwaters, including the famous Palo Alto in California. There's over a hundred other concrete barges throughout the world, and most of those were sunk as breakwaters or piers as well. The Atlantis started as an eyesore, but over time became an icon for the residents and visitors of Cape May. Only a year after the grounding, her wreck was used by the Coast Guard to practice land-sea rescues using life-saving buoys. And in the 1940s, someone climbed aboard her and slapped a billboard for boat insurance on her starboard bow. It won't be much longer until the Atlantis has completely disappeared beneath the surface. And I've long wanted to get out to the wreck and document her like I did in this video. Anyway, I'm cold. I'm hungry. I'm gonna get out of here before New Jersey decides that this is worth charging me money for.